A few days back, Adobe made an exciting announcement that it's no longer going to have a waitlist for trying out their generative AI Firefly. And as someone who never got access to Firefly before this, I was very excited to try it out. Since you're watching this video, I'm going to assume that you've already checked it out. But if you haven't, you can check it out by visiting firefly.adobe.com. There's this one feature in particular that I was very fascinated with, which is their text effects. I wondered how they have perfected the text look, knowing that generative art models are not really great at drawing text. So I decided to experiment with it myself using Stable Diffusion. If you don't know what Stable Diffusion is, it's an open source text to image model and you can check it out the web version on stablediffusionweb.com. But for the purposes of this video, I'm going to use Automatic 11.11's web UI for Stable Diffusion on my M1 MacBook. I've experimented with a couple of approaches trying to achieve that perfect text effect look. I'm very excited to share my entire process with you. So let's dive right in. My initial instinct was to try a simple text font and see if I could even achieve something remotely similar to Firefly's effects. So I went ahead with this prompt, the letter A made with intricate gold ornaments. This was a complete fail. The effect itself looked pretty nice, but Stable Diffusion has completely screwed up the shape of the letter A. It looks more closer to the letter B, but still not quite right. Honestly speaking, this was somewhat expected because diffusion models generally struggle with drawing text. Since it screwed up the shape, I wondered if there was something I could do to control the structure of the letter and that's when I realized that control net would be the perfect choice for it. It is a neural network structure that allows you to control the outputs of diffusion models by adding certain conditions on top of it. ControlNet allows you to manipulate poses, expressions, the general layout of the image, convert scribbles to real life images and much more. If you're curious and want to learn more about it, I've left some links in the description box below. You can use ControlNet with Automatic 1111 by installing the extension. I already have that up and running, so I'm just going to get started. So ControlNet takes an input image, a preprocessor and a model. For the control image, I decided to go ahead with simple black text on a white background that I generated using Canva and uploaded it to the control net section. I used the same prompt as the previous approach and used the invert preprocessor because my control image has a white background and black lines and the model that I used was Linard. As you can see this worked perfectly. Here are some of the generations I created for the letter A and they look amazing. Notice that I used a thicker font so that Stable Diffusion has a lot more space to work around and generate the effect on. So I got it working with a single letter, but I wonder if this approach works with complete words as well. For words as well, I used the same approach. I created a control image by laying thick black text on top of a white background and uploaded it to the control net section. Upon experimenting, I realized that this approach starts giving unreliable results with full words. As you can see, this ice effect came out looking pretty well, but this bread effect is not that great. In the sushi effect it has completely screwed up the letter H and for the cake effect it generated the cake on the back of the word instead of making the word out of the cake. So again I had to think of some other approach to make it work. I wondered if it worked well with individual letters. What if I generated these letters separately and then combined them together to form the word. I decided to use the same seed for all the letters so that the generated outputs are consistent with each other. But soon I realized that even with individual letters, the generations were not that reliable. It would usually take a few tries to get the letter right. For example, this E in this donut effect and this B that uses the bread effect. Similarly for the R and D, the bread effect was not really working. And there's also excessive noise in the background, which meant that removing the background and then combining these letters together was a difficult task. I thought of adding an extra layer of guidance for the general shape of the letter and that's when I realized that image to image could also fit right in in this process. I thought that maybe I could do two rounds of generations to achieve that perfect clean look. And these are the final four steps that actually ended up working for me. Step one is similar to the second approach, which is generating a letter using text to image and a control image. These look pretty good, but 
but as you can remember these are not very reliable and there's too much noise in the background which means extracting the letters out of them is a difficult task so i decided to use this image for the second generation in image to image instead of using this first output as it is i decided to create a text mask from it so that there's an extra layer of guidance on which part of the canvas i want stable diffusion to draw you can do this using photoshop or within canva and for the second generation i used this text mask as the image to image input and the same prompt and control net image as the first one these outputs were much better than the one before and they also had a white background which meant i could easily remove them and combine the letters together these are some of the text effects that i was able to generate using this approach i love the sushi one here for this i'm using the mina mix model this intricate gold ornaments one these chocolate cookies one and a lot more this technique has yielded the best output so far i've also been experimenting with these concepts in code attempting to create my own firefly like app but using stable diffusion if you're interested i've left a link to my github repository in the description box below i hope you found this as interesting as i did see you in the next one